and Madison bought me the one chip challenge and said, hey, since you like to torture yourself, maybe you want to try this. And I, he said, but you should film it. I said, I'll do it one better. I'll try and preach through it. In case you don't know, uh, it is one chip. They said it's anywhere from 1.5 to 2.2 million Scoville, which is a thousand times hotter than a habanero. I'm just believing God can use this tonight and share as we talk about uh, push through the pain. But I want to start with the word of God. So um, I'll be reading today from 1 Peter 4. It says, dear ones, don't be surprised when you experience your trial by fire. It is not something strange and unusual, but it is something you should rejoice in. In it, you share the anointed sufferings, and you will be that much more joyful when his glory is revealed. If anyone condemns you for following Jesus as the anointed one, consider yourself blessed. The glorious spirit of God rests on you. Uh, but if you should suffer for being a Christian, don't think of it as a disgrace as it would be if you had done wrong. Praise God that you're permitted to carry this name. So even if you should suffer now for doing God's will, continue doing good and trust your futures to the judgment and mercy of a faithful creator. All right, let's pray. Jesus, thank you for your word. Uh, God, I just pray that you can use this today, this weird idea to drive a point home. But ultimately, Lord, um, what's going to make any of this stick is your word. Your word is so powerful. It really, really is life-changing, and we cling to it today, God, to know you better, to know the truth of your word, and as a result, to take it this week and live it out in our families, our workplaces, our lives, everything else, and let this work, and let this not be too painful. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to try and put the whole thing just right in. Oh, it looks moldy. <laughs> Oh. Like that's the Satan. My goal is to not uh, there it is. <laughs> is to not not have to touch one of the <clears throat> one of these. I'll be all right. Okay. Verse twelve. Don't be surprised when you experience your trial by fire by fire. Uh, it is not something strange and unusual. Uh, what is the trial by fire for you? Holy cow. That was really hot. Uh, okay. Have you ever heard the quote that God will never let you, God will never let you, never give you more, let you, ha oh, I can't even talk. God will never let you handle more than you can bear. Have you ever heard that? Jesus was actually pretty clear that our struggles would increase as we follow him. Here's some of the things he told us. Oh, it's like daggers in the throat. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. Take up your cross and follow me. The world will hate you because it hated me first. Ugh, a good quote. Wesley, from The Princess Bride, says, Life is pain, Highness. Anyone who says differently is selling something. So, I... Uh, this is in your notes. Oh, I don't want to take the milk. Hold. Oh. In your notes, pain can come because life isn't fair. There is evil in the world, and I am stupid. Life isn't fair. People die, relationships dissolve, yet we are called to love and put our hearts on the line. There is evil in the world. You might get cheated out of promotion. You might have been abused. Whatever happened to you. Yet we are called to let God be our judge and defender. And I am stupid. Sometimes, like right now, I make dumb choices that have real world consequences. Oh. <coughs> oh, wow. Ah. And yet... Regardless of my consequences, I'm meant to pursue holiness. So, following Jesus means enduring pain, whether we choose it or not. You might choose your pain. It might be your own fault, or it might have just happened to you. But part of following Jesus oh, is enduring the pain. Oh. Oh. Uh, anybody else like hot sauce? Hot stuff? No? You should try it. It's not bad. 
our trial by fire is something you should rejoice in. That is a bizarre sentence. Something you should rejoice in, it's worth it. James 1, 2 to 4 says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its perfect results so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. I can't feel my lips. Ugh. Consider it all joy. Which joy just means settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of my life and determined choice to praise God in all things. The pain of your situation, whatever it might be, like I said, that you're thinking that you're going through, internal pain, mental pain, spiritual pain, physical pain, whatever, the pain of our situation produces perseverance. In our trials by fire, we share in Jesus' suffering, and we are refined in Jesus. We are refined in Jesus. Psalm 66.10 says, For <clears throat> For you have put us to the test, O God. You have refined us as silver is refined. So a good story I found. What do silversmiths do? A reporter went and interviewed a silversmith once. In the interview, uh, it said that in refining silver, you hold silver in the middle of the fire where where it's hottest to burn away impurities. The interviewer Ask the silversmith if I had to sit in front of fire, if if you had to sit in front of the fire the whole time while the silver is being refined. The man said yes and explained that he has to stay the whole time in front of the fire and keep his eye on the silver. If the silver is left even a moment too long in the flames, it would be damaged. The lady was silent for a moment, then asked, How do you know when the silver is fully refined? And he smiled at her and answered, Oh, that's easy when I see my image in it. If you're feeling heat in your life right now, maybe maybe things are tough in marriage or friendships are strained or family dynamics or physical healing that hasn't come or just whatever. If you're feeling heat, remember God is is refining you into who he wants you to be and he's shaping you in his image. God wants to shape you in his image. But to do that, kind of like the silversmith, sometimes you got to go through fire so you can work out the imperfections and the impurities so you can make you stronger, so you can make you pure. And those things are really important. Pushing through the pain is not just about enduring life's struggles. I think that's really important too. Push through the pain, push through the pain. It's not just about enduring. It's actually about finding victory in it. Like, there is victory through these things that you're pushing through. God is not some kind of masochist who just wants to be mean to you. (laughs) He actually has purpose in the pain that he allows. Why do bad things happen? Well, God doesn't necessarily throw them at us, but he allows things because he says, hey, let me walk you through this. I can make you stronger. So whatever your situation, I just want you to know it is possible to walk through it with the Spirit's help. Verse 14 said that, Peter said, he said, if anyone condemns you for following Jesus, and today I do want to specify as well, we really are talking, I I believe I'm talking to Christ followers who love Jesus, who want to follow Jesus, and yet there is the reality that we all must face that it's not always easy, and it's not meant to be a bed of roses, it's a challenge, but it's better to know that up front so that you can walk through it. So anyways, with that said, if anyone condemns you for following Jesus, As the anointed one, consider yourself blessed. Everyone say blessed. Why? Because the glorious spirit of God rests on you. Man, if you are getting pushback from people in your life, okay, if you follow Christ, and as a result of that, you are getting pushback from coworkers, a boss, employees, uh, family members, spouse, Children who think differently now. I don't know what it could be. Whatever it is for you. It could be people. It could be situations. Pushbacks because of this. Hey, because I'm trying to walk a godly life, everyone else cheated to get this, and I'm trying to walk in integrity, and I'm being left behind at work, or whatever it might be, right? Or maybe it's even pushback from yourself. I don't, I don't feel good about myself. I don't think good things about myself. I don't believe in myself. Whatever the pushback is, 
you are blessed through it. God says, I will bless you through it, and the Holy Spirit rests on you. So you are not doing this by yourself. The Holy Spirit actually rests on you. In 1 Peter 4.16, it says, but if you should suffer for being a Christian. So you can suffer for being a Christian. Like I said, we've given examples, and you guys will talk about that in at table times while I'm huddled over in the corner. You guys can discuss this. Uh, don't think of it as a disgrace, <coughs> as if it would be if you had done something wrong. So if you're suffering for Jesus, that's way different than suffering because you made stupid choices and you're, you did something wrong. You're suffering for Jesus. That is different. Praise God that you're permitted to carry this name. Like, that's a big statement. Praise God that you are permitted. What a blessing it is. If you're going to suffer for something in life, it may as well be for Jesus. It's a privilege to following him. So how do we push through the pain? Well, first off, remember that you are not alone. You're not. Uh, this group is an important part. Um, you know, for me, having that daily Bible group with the guys through the word, it's powerful. It makes a difference. We can do it together. It keeps us strong. It keeps us focused. And hold on to Jesus. So connect with guys and hold, hold to Jesus. Because... He knows what you're going through. And I think it's important, again, God is not some masochist way off that's just like letting bad things happen. It's like Jesus came and walked through what we've walked through. In fact, Hebrews 4.15 says, For Jesus is not some high priest who has no sympathy for our weaknesses and flaws. He has already been tested in every way that we are tested. But he emerged victorious without failing God. He has been through what we've been through. Have you ever been betrayed? Jesus has been betrayed. Have you ever been abandoned? Jesus has felt abandoned. Have you ever been? He would have gone through everything, yet he never defaulted, or he never walked away from God. He pursued God through all of it. I love this. He was tested like us, but he emerged victorious without failing God. Man, that power lives in us. We have the spirit of God in us. Like, we... We aren't Jesus, but we are like Jesus. And the more that we follow him and the more we make these choices and the more we stick walking through these kind of things at work, at home, whatever it is, you become more like Jesus. You can emerge victorious without failing God. That is my goal. That is what I would love to be able to say. Man, I'm going through this marriage thing. And I'm, my goal, my hope, my prayer is that I will emerge victorious, not failing God. I'm going through this with family. I'm going through this at work, and, and ah, I want to compromise, but I just know what I need to do. The Holy Spirit won't leave me alone. I know what I need to do. I want to merge victorious, not failing God. 1 Peter 4.19, the last verse I read. So even if you should suffer now for doing God's will, continue doing good. Like, suffer for doing God's will. I want to do God's will. Oh, I, I might suffer for it but continue doing good. And I love this. Trust your futures to the judgment and mercy of a faithful creator. Remember, just to recap, you are not alone. Pain isn't unusual. You can embrace it with joy. It is a privilege to suffer for something eternal. Keep going, persevere, and look forward and trust your future to a faithful God who is refining you into his image. Don't back down. Don't compromise. Don't drink the milk. <laughs> oh. That was really hard not to. I might, I feel like I might be making it through the worst of it now. Now I just got runny nose. That, uh, yeah, I didn't know what to expect, but it still hurts. But I've already proven to myself that I got this far. Why should I stop now? Like, really, that is, you know what? Like, a minute in, I wanted this so bad. But now I'm like, I could go for it, but I've already made it this far. Like, it was actually really hard for me to focus for, especially those first few minutes, because I was all I could focus on was what was happening to me. And the reality is that can happen to us sometimes. It's just the, me, me, what's happening in my life. This is consuming me. But there's more at stake than what just my, what's going on in my pain. So I'm going to push through the pain. I'm going to acknowledge it's real. It's there. But I'm going to push through it, believing God can use it and walk me through this. This may have been you at some point. You've determined in your heart, it's just not worth fighting for anymore. I would encourage you, don't believe that. It can be worth the fight. Keep going. 
So my question is, do you need to fight for your marriage? Do you need to buckle down and complete the semester? Do you need to change the way you run your business? Do you need to make more time for God and family? Do you need to stop avoiding that person and actually talk to them? Whatever it looks like for you, push through the pain. God is building character in us. And we need, we need to be and we need men of integrity, character, and conviction. We don't need flashy. We need consistent and dependable and trustworthy and anchored. God can work with that. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to talk in our group. So, Jesus, thank you. Uh, God, just help us walk through these trials by fire. God, whatever you've got for us or whatever you're, you know is coming that you want to walk, uh, walk us through it, God, we want to be ready for it. Help us trust in your spirit to lead us and guide us. And now bless the conversation as we apply it to each of our individual lives for the rest of this time together. In Jesus' name, amen. How are you feeling now? I'm really sweaty. Like, somebody rubbed the glass in my gut. And then it's a big cramp. And I'm really shaky. I can't feel my fingers. And I'm dizzy. So good.